Hello, 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 hello! Welcome back to another video here of the Chassis Variant Series. We're here with the Longbow once again. There's quite a few variants of the old Longbow we have to get through, and this one is the 12 Charlie, or 12C. It's a model that doesn't stray too far from the intended role of the Longbow, that of fire support, an 85-ton chassis. It does a few things a bit different. Uh, the 12C is obviously a later development that tries to keep in line with the uh, long-range fire support role by having a pair of LRM20s and a pair of LRM15s, both uh, and upgraded with an Artemis fire control system. Obviously in Battletech that means you get a nice chance to get some extra missiles on target when you do hit. It gives you a plus two on whatever roll that you make on the missile cluster hit table. And in MWO, it means that the missiles travel in a nice tighter spread, basically, so they uh, are more likely to land in roughly the same area when you hit a target. It's backed up by a pair, sorry, not a pair, a trio of ER small lasers, which are also mounted, and the whole thing is pretty much topped off by the fact that it can carry all of this, and a bevy of ammunition, by the way, uh, and firepower uh, with the 255 XL engine as a means of propelling it forward. It still doesn't go particularly quick for its size, but it does allow it to carry all of this extra stuff. Now, by default, in MWO terms, you could probably drop the Artemis, save yourself a bit of tonnage, and obviously do something like a, uh, a bigger engine, drop it down to a standard to avoid that pesky issue with the XL side of things, especially in MWO, a game where pinpoint accuracy isn't unheard of, whether that be through nefarious types who may or may not be using certain software that is uh, allowing most of their hits to always hit one location that they aim for, or just because you can get so much laser vomit or direct impact weaponry in one spot that it can just tear through arms and side torsos like nobody's business. XL engines I know do make a few people's uh, little rectums squeak whenever they hear them because they are absolutely terrified of using them in this game, and for good reason. MWO has kind of made the XL engine a little bit of a a, a little bit of a, well, more of a negative than ever really reaching anything of a positive. They work relatively well on light mechs and that's about it in this game. Whereas tabletop, it's, XL engines work a little bit differently. You've got to destroy all three of the uh, critical locations in the side torso to destroy the whole mech. It can be a little bit more forgiving. It still has the same result, it's just due to the randomness of die rolls and whether you even confirm a crit roll for instance, it's a very different story. The background on the 12C is probably one of the more interesting aspects. The 12 Charlie, and this really speaks into the visual history of the longbow in general, because when the mech was first introduced in Battletech it was kind of mentioned and I think it has an image that was shown in one of the original source books, but it never really had a TRO entry until way further on in the products line, in the TRO 3058. But the visuals of it changed in TRO 3058. It made it a much more, well, a much more different looking mech compared to the original anime artwork, which was what a lot of fans knew it from. Uh, I believe it was the Comstar source book. But yeah, it hadn't really had a proper write up till that point. People were aware of it, and it gets mentioned a few times of different pilots. I think there's a possibly a Wolf Dragoon's pilot, or there's a member of one of the Razzle Har groups, is a pilot of a longbow, for instance. But yeah, actual stats for this thing didn't really come out and uh, wasn't really floating around as commonly as some of the other unseens for a long time. The mech got a bit of a visual update in 3058, but it didn't really stick. And then for some reason, when they did TRO Project Phoenix, there was a whole raft of redesign ideas. All the Innersphere mechs, unseens, and some of the vehicles got the most horrific makeovers you, you could imagine. They, they looked awful. There, there was genuinely no excuse for how bad these things looked. Taken in isolation, maybe as completely new designs, they would look bad, but at least you could kind of accept them because, well, it's an original design. These things were bug ugly. These were not pretty at all. Uh, the Longbow 12C is probably one of the lesser of the evils of that, but it don't look great when you look at the original Longbow. Um, but the narrative influence there was that there was a company called Vicor Industries who were basically in the market for profiteering off the Fedcom Civil War, and there was a demand for materiel, obviously replacement machines and that kind of thing, and Vicor Industries in-universe decided to take a lot of what had been around for a long time and made new variants that utilized some of the newer technology that was around, but also, for whatever reason, they give them a visual makeover to maybe, I guess, in-universe 
make them more visually distinct from the original model so you knew this was a modern, more uh, up-to-date version of the mech. Never mind the fact that some of the mechs didn't even barely resemble the thing that they were replacing. And this is where the 12C comes in. Outside of that, it's literally just supposed to be what the standard longbow does, but with more missiles, changing the 5s to 15s and dropping the medium lasers to smalls. Pretty much the order of the day. In MWO, obviously, it still works pretty much exactly the same way that, well, any other missile support mech does. You hope that the light mechs of the enemy team don't spot you or find you and then tear you apart. Otherwise, you're hoping that you've got teammates who are going to hold locks for you, and that's pretty much the story there. This was a really good match. Uh, it was very back and forth. I honestly didn't know what was going to happen with this. It was the first time I took this mech out. And I'll admit, I had a few little frustrations just trying to get the right targets, but once the fight started around about this time and started dropping missiles and things, I, I felt like I was, I was starting to actually contribute. I know I've mentioned it before, LRMs are a dirty word for some people as they do feel that the gameplay is uh, too, much, too easy point and click. I personally prefer the fact that there are some mechs that are built to do this kind of work and there are mechs that are very good at doing brawling and there are mechs that are very good at being uh, scouts and those mechs are very good at utility functions like ECM or being able to hit with NARC or use TAG or being able to get to a position where they can drop artillery, that kind of thing. There is supposed to be playstyles for everybody, not just one style of play and that's it. That's the death of a game like this. And to be honest, with the reputation MWO has, it don't matter if you're one of the newer players and you've been around for a couple of years and you think you know everything about Metcore Online, trust me. This game has been around so long now that it's if it was going to be popular, it would have been popular long before now. It's limping along because there's a license to maintain and that's pretty much it. So the longbow in this, it suffers from many limitations, not least of the fact that it is a giant uh, of, a, of a machine. It's got extremely wide arms, extremely large centre torso, it's not particularly quick, and unless you want to do something by a complete rip out and rework of the machine, which I'm sure plenty of people have already done and experimented with those people bought the pack, you could probably turn this into something that could be a bit more MRM focused, probably. Uh, high mounts, at least. The arms are quite high, uh, high position, so it does at least give you the ability to uh, peek and shoot with those. Um, they don't have MMLs in this. I wouldn't be surprised if MMLs do turn up at some point, though. But uh, they do obviously give you the option for making a streak build, a combination of streaks or just SRMs, however you want to really run them in that respect. There are a few options, and the energy hardpoints are there for people who want to have something that's a bit more focused on maybe, I don't know, you could probably stick in a binary laser or you know, pulses, that kind of thing, whatever floats your boat, really. Um, the the longbow is at least a little bit malleable in how you want to be able to put these things together. Uh, whether or not it's a good machine I think is largely going to come down to those players who think about their machines from the perspective of the the profile. Uh, is it a mech that's easy to see and hit for instance? And the longbow is definitely in the it's easy to see and it's easy to hit kind of category. And then there are those players who largely just don't mind, as long as the mech is fun to play. And I personally think the longbow is that. I think it is a fun uh, design. It's a fun chassis. Um, it's just, yeah, it just suffers a little bit from the fact that it, uh, yeah, struggles. I, ah, that, yeah, that Hunchback 2C, he just jumps in and overheats himself, even though he had, he had, the, he had the Madcap player dead to rights because he was within his minimum range, but unfortunately... Uh, he uh, yeah, overheats himself to death, which is a bit of a shame there. Trying to get that kill. As I said, this match was really good. It went back and forth. Uh, my stats were on the screen before. I think I got a couple. I think I got a kill. I contributed to a lot of other kills. Got a bunch of assists. Did about 600 odd damage. Probably isn't the highest. I know there'll be some some of you out there who are like, well, I just, in my uh, LRM gameplay, I'm regularly hitting over a thousand damage per turn. I'm sure you are, Hoss. I mean, it's, it's, uh, no, not taken away from you. You know, if this is your game of choice. Yeah, you, you should be pulling, you know, big big damage numbers if it's basically the only thing you play, you know? Um, that That's that's the thing. If not, then uh, if you're like me, just... I've played it for so long, I've just not really... I've just dropped off from regular play, so I think 600 for me is, is decent. It's, it's good. Um, for me, as I said, I've, I've got to stress this, because there's this creeping thing of, of newer people coming over. 
Uh, so, oh, I, I winced when you did such and such, and it's like, oh, you, you, all, you almost made me spit out my caviar when I was watching it because it was, it was, it was a dire play, dire form service. It's just like I'm not a professional. I'm not, I'm not trying to play MWO to uh, to get good, as some people think. I like BattleTech, and unfortunately, there's a lot of people who play MWO who don't know or don't care about BattleTech. They just want generic mech game where you can swap out weapons and whatever else and have stompy robots and that that's fine it, it's okay but it's you know it's that it's what's happening with fandoms now you've got the the classic fans the the people who were there when it was you know great and it was at the height and then you've got the new people who come in who were very laissez-faire about the whole thing oh let's change it up let's let's fuck with it mess with it and who cares those people who were fans of it who kept it going all these years uh, fuck those people. Let's, they don't matter anymore. Let's go with the new, the new wave, the new generation. So yeah, it's it's pretty much in that in that spec. If you enjoy MWO for modifying the mechs, whatever else, yeah, go for it. It's it's definitely very good. That's one of the best things that PGI did, is they gave you a very very fluid system of gameplay options and builds. And uh, if you're a BattleTech fan, you yeah, you've got a really really nice modern rendition of a lot of the mechs, and and it's nice to look at them. Unfortunately. Uh, Game just ain't catering to 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 us. We're a dying breed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the Lombo 12C. Uh, I enjoyed it personally. It was it was a decent one. Pity about the map being so bleeding bright. But yeah, anyway. Uh, but, oh god, we're running out of time. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one all. Bye. Bye. See you.